Hey, how's it going everyone? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can import CSV file in Postman to do data driven testing. So let's get started. So we're going to start off with creating our API request. So in this case, I'm going to be using JSON placeholder, which is basically a free fake API for testing and prototyping. So I'm just going to use a post request from this particular API. Once we have this, we're going to add it in our Postman. We'll create our basic post request, test it out to make sure it's working. After that, we're gonna go ahead and replace the body data with some CSV variables. So essentially, whatever data that you're putting in your CSV, all the headers are gonna get replaced over here in this body for our API request. So I'll show you how that will work. Once you have your CSV variables created, we're gonna create a collection and add this request into our collection. The reason this is important is because in order for us to import the CSV file for data-driven testing, we need to run a collection. So to run a connection, we need to create one and then we will add this API request in our collection and then we're gonna run through our data using the collection run. So once that is done, we're gonna go ahead and run our collection by importing the CSV file, which I mentioned just now. And after that, we're gonna go ahead and preview the CSV data to make sure the mapping is done properly. So Postman will automatically map your headers and rows based on the data that you have provided. So we're just gonna make sure that the data looks okay. Once you know that the data is fine, we will run our collection to make sure it's working. And then we're gonna also take a look at how we can add tests to validate our CSV data. Since we're gonna be importing the CSV file, we wanna make sure that the data is correct and we are passing the right data to our API request. And we can do that by creating some tests in our Postman. So we'll create those tests to validate our CSV data. So this is what we're gonna be covering in this video. So let's go ahead and get started by creating our API request. All right, so I'm over here on the JSON placeholder website. So we're gonna go ahead and try to find out the API that we're gonna be using for our testing. So I'm just gonna scroll down. So we just wanna find a request that can be used to create some data. So I'm gonna click on C guide over here for usage example. So these ones are get request, which is not what we want. All right, so this is good. So this is a creating a resource. It will go ahead and create a post request. So I'm just gonna copy this request and then I'm gonna to head to Postman to paste this request and create our first API request. So let's do that. All right, so I'm over here in Postman. I'm gonna click on this new button right here to go ahead and create our new API request. So let me do that. Now here I'm gonna select HTTP request. All right, now I'm just gonna paste in my request and I'm gonna change the get request to a post request here. And then we need to go ahead and add some body. So in my body, I'm gonna select raw and then change the text to JSON. So this post request will take in three different types of body. So, or basically three different types of properties. So I'm gonna add that in. The first one is a user ID. So I can add a user ID, let's say uh, 101. And then I'm gonna create a title. So I can say my sample post and then I'm gonna create a body. So here body could be just random body. I don't know, it doesn't matter. All right, so let's go ahead and click on the send request to make sure our API is working. So I'll click send and there you go. So we have our user ID, we have our title, it auto generates the ID for us and we have the body as well. So this is good, that means our data is actually working. Whatever we have passed into this API request is correct. Now what we need to do is, Take this API request and replace some of these values with our CSV variable. Now I've already went ahead and created a CSV file. So I'm just gonna bring that up over here. All right, so this is my CSV file. I have the headers over here, which is user ID, title, and body. And then I've added the relevant data over here. So for example, this is my user ID for the first row, for the second, for third, fourth, and fifth. Same thing for title as well as for the body. Now this one doesn't seem that nice, but I'm just gonna bring this up in a another screen where this is nicely formatted. So let me just do that. All right, so the same data, I have opened it up over here in numbers, which is gonna be automatically format my CSV data. So you can see I have my user ID, I have this title and I have this body. So I'm gonna take this data and pass it to my API request. So essentially when we're gonna run this, it's gonna run through all of this five different data rows and it's gonna automate that so that it's gonna make five different API calls with this different data. And then we're gonna validate that by creating some tests for it. So let's go ahead and do that. So the very first thing we're gonna do is replace this with some variables, CSV variable. So the user ID is gonna be changed to user ID over here. 
and make sure you add them in a string. So this should be in a string. I'm going to do the same thing for my sample post as well. This will be changed to my title. And then finally, this will be changed to body. There you go. All right, so I went ahead and added the variables over here. So we have our user ID, which you can see. I've added it as a variable, then same thing we did it for our title, and then we did that for body as well. Now make sure when you're adding in the variables, you add these two curly brackets, and within that, you add in your variable name. And this variable name should match exactly the header rows of your CSV. In my case, the header of the CSV had user ID, title, and body. And all of this should be wrapped up in string. So you can see I have this quotation marks here. So all of that are wrapped up in string. So once your format is correct, we're going to save this request. So I'm going to save it here. And for this, I'm going to create a new collection. You can name it whatever you want. In this case, I know this is for JSON placeholder. So I'll just name my collection JSON placeholder. And I'm going to save this request in that placeholder. You can change the name if you want, but for now it's fine. All right, so you can see on the right, I have created my JSON placeholder and have my request stored in over there. So that's good. Now at this moment, when you're gonna try to do a send, it's not gonna work. So here, I'm gonna run this and you can see we are getting 201 created, but it's actually giving you this variable data instead, which is not correct and that's not what we want. What we want this is to basically pick up our CSV data and replace this with our CSV data. So let's do that now. So to run the collection, we're going to click on our collection over here and then I'm going to click on this three dots and here I have an option to do run collection. So make sure you click on the send collection option and then I will do that and essentially it's going to pick up your API. If in case you have multiple API requests here, so just select the one that you wanted to run it with. So I'm going to select that here and then here you can see iteration at the moment, it only shows one. This will change based on the number of rows you have. So in our case, we have five rows. So when we're going to import our CSV file, it will automatically change. So I'm going to do that. I'll do select file. And then I'm going to import my file here. And as you can see that the iterations have been changed to five now. That's once again, because we had five rows in our CSV table. Now, if you want, you can add some delay between each API call. So for example, it's going to make the first post request with row one. And then it's going to wait for X amount of millisecond, whatever you set it up over here, then it's going to make the second call. It's optional. For example, if you know your API takes some time to get back or you want to have some kind of delay, you can add that. Let's say I'm going to add in a hundred millisecond delay between both of them. And now we can go ahead and preview our file. So here you can see the data file type is text CSV and I'm going to click on preview. Now make sure this mapping is correct for you guys. So over here, whatever variable we added, user ID, you can see they're all mapped properly. The title is mapped properly as well and then we have our body which is mapped properly too so as long as your mapping is correct you can go ahead and try to run your collection now another thing i'm going to do is click on save responses what this will do is when we're going to run our api request it's going to go ahead and save whatever responses it's going to get if you don't do that you won't be able to see the responses so this is important for us to make sure that we're getting the right data so i'm going to click on that and then everything else is going to be same i'm going to click on run json placeholder so there you go, it went through our CSV file and ran this five times. So this is our first call, which it made. So let's click on that. And here we can see our request URL, the headers, the body, and so on. So let's see what request body we sent it with because over there is when we were actually replacing a data. So I'm gonna click on this. And now you can see in our request body, we have our user ID one, the title, which is basically the same title that we were picking it up from our CSV. So that is being picked up correctly. And then I can see my body as well, which is the body data I picked up from my CSV file. So that means it's working fine. It's picking up my data correctly. Let's make sure we are doing the same thing for our other request as well. Let's say I'm gonna click on the third one here. I'll do request body. And yep, even for this one, I can see user ID is three. The title is different. The body is different as well. And let's do another one for the fifth one too, just to make sure that's correct as well. And yep, the fifth one is correct as well. We can see our data being showed up perfectly. So that's great. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make sure my response is correct as well. So I'm gonna click on response body and the response is nice. I can see I have the same data that I passed into my request that's been created. Along with that, I have my ID as well. Now in this case, the ID is gonna be same for all of those five iterations. And that's just how this API actually works. 
This is nothing to do with um, that there's something wrong with the way you are running your test. It's just that in this particular API, they don't really go ahead and create new IDs each time. They just use the same ID throughout the test. All right, so this is great. Now we have actually verified that we are able to run our CSV file and we are able to see all those different iteration as well. But one thing that you're noticing over here is it says that the request does not have any test. So let's go ahead and create some tests to make sure that the data we are getting is actually correct. So let's do that. So to create a test, we're gonna go back to our API request. I'm gonna go back here. Now in the test section right here, I'm gonna click on that. And here we can go ahead and add our test. So let's say my first test is gonna be very basic. I just wanna make sure that I'm getting the 201 response back. So I can just use one of the snippets here. So I know there's a snippet for status code. So I'm gonna click on this. So we're gonna do pm.test status code is 200. That's not correct. We wanna make sure that the status code should be 201. So let's just change that. I wanna say that the status code should be 201. And here I'm gonna save this request. Make sure you save this and that you should not see this save button. It says no new changes because I just saved it by control S or command S. So now since this is saved, we're gonna go back and try to run our um, collection again. So let's do that. Here I can just simply click on run again. And there you go. This time you can see our tests are passing. We have first test passing here, which is status code is 201. Same thing, I can see it for other iterations as well, that my status is actually working, that it says status code is 201 for all of them. Perfect. Now let's do the same thing, but this time actually make sure that we are validating our CSV data. So I'm gonna add in another test, but here I'm gonna make sure that I'm validating the response data that I'm getting back so that that's correct. So let's do that. All right, so I'm gonna use this one, which is response body JSON value check. So this is the one that I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna click on that. So what this test does is we can simply make sure we're checking some kind of data over here, which you're getting back. So here I can just say maybe verify my title and body, right? So let's do that. I'll say verify title and body. So this will automatically save it in our uh, JSON data over here. And the JSON data dot value, we're gonna change this to JSON data dot title. And this should equal, all right, so this one is interesting because we are actually making sure that it should equal to our CSV. But how do we get our CSV data, right? This is the data that we're getting back from the response, but how do I make sure that I have the data to my CSV? Well, it's actually really easy with Postman. All I have to do is just say data, and it will automatically know that I'm talking about the data that I will be running it or using it as part of my collection. So in this case, the data we're gonna be using in a collection is a CSV. So I'm gonna say data, and what do I want as part of the data? I'm gonna say in my data, I wanna verify the title. So it will automatically go ahead and for the first iteration, it's gonna pick the first row and it's gonna run through the title over there. It's gonna pick the title and make sure it's equal to the title that we have in our response body. So we're gonna do the same thing for my body as well. So I'm going to do JSON data dot body. Then I'm going to change this over here to body. Perfect. So this is my overall test. So we have two tests now, status code is 201. And then another one is verifying our title and our body. So let's save this and go back to our collection run. And I'm going to click on run again. And there you go. This time we are verifying our title and our body and it's successfully passing for all of our iterations. Perfect. So how do you know that this is actually working? Well, like I always say in my other videos as well, to make sure whenever you add in some kind of assertion, always try to fail it. If it fails correctly, that means your tests are working. So let's just fail this instead of saying maybe body over here, I'm just gonna say random data. Now I'm gonna save this, well, it's already saved. Now I'm gonna go back and then try to run again. This time, this particular second test should fail for all of our iterations. So let's do that and look at that. It's saying verify title and body. It failed for pretty much all of our iterations. And the reason it's failing is because it was expecting this particular text, but instead what it got was random data because instead of picking it up from our CSV file, we are just passing in some random data. Same thing over here, instead of getting this text or this text, we are actually just getting a random data back. So that's why it's actually failing. So that means we know that our assertions are working. I can go ahead and fix this again to back to data body. And then if I go back and do run again, everything should pass as it is. All right, so that's great. Now, what we did in this particular video is we went ahead and added our body over here, basically the variables over here. 
but these variables can be used pretty much anywhere throughout your request meaning you can even add them in your headers so if you want to go ahead and create some new header actually let me just hide these ones all right so if you want to add in some headers here for your key and value you can do that as well so I, I don't know maybe you're passing in username and password here so you can do username and then you can go ahead and add in that username over here so this way it's going to pick up the username from your csv file same thing over here you can do password and just add that over here similar format it's going to be there and this time it's going to look for the password from your csv file so it's totally possible to not just pass it in your body but you can also pass it in your headers so that way it's going to pick it up based on your headers you can do the same thing for your pre-request script as well so any data that you want to print out over here you can simply just do console.log and when you do data um, let's say i do user id it's going to go ahead and print out your user id from your csv file so this is basically getting your data from your csv file so it's possible to do it this way as well you can have your some pre-request script you can have some of your test over here and then same thing in your headers or body as well you can use those variables so it's totally flexible with postman it's really easy to just pick up your data from csv file and replace it wherever you want all right so in this video we looked at how we can do data driven testing using csv file in postman so we started off with creating an api request and then we replaced the body data with the csv variables and after that we added them into our collection and then we made sure that the data that we have our csv file is being mapped properly to our postman and then we tried to run a collection to make sure that we were able to do multiple iteration or essentially be able to do data driven testing using our csv file and then finally we also added some tests to validate our csv data so that's it for this video guys in the next video i will show you how you can do data driven testing using json files and how you can work with json nested data let me know in the comments below what other topics you would like me to cover related to postman and if you're looking to get started in your SDET career, make sure to check out SDET Unicorns Academy, where you will get access to all of the courses that I've created so far, as well as get direct support from me wherever you get stuck during your learning experience. That's it for now, guys. I will see you all in the next one.